so turned inside out um, that I can only sit down with you perhaps over a cup of coffee to explain what that's been like. Uh, but it's just been excruciating and cruel. Um, but I'd like to believe that there is some hope at the end of this, uh, and I just I think I'll be better for it. So, um, can I answer anything else? Yes. I, I just have a question about your family and, and um, the court not allowing you to speak to your wife. I mean, do you have any indication at all when they might allow no. you to do that? No. And I have to tell you, I mean, I've been part of the criminal justice system, working for the city and sharing public safety. And I have, being on the, being in the side of the aisle as a defendant and looking at how uh, this is processed, in dealing with these kind of cases, I, I'm stunned at how it's not also designed to help families reunite. And I didn't quite know that until you go through it. And it's, it's, um, oh, it's just been hard, so hard. Because when your family is used in a way that they become that lever, I just didn't think that could happen in San Francisco. Not in the way that it's happening. When I was at family court asking for a modification of the stay away order when I wasn't able to see my son, and my son, you know, who uh, had come down with some allergy that caused my wife to call Mayor Art Agnos, who I was staying with at his house late at night because they thought they were going to have to rush him to the hospital, I was out the door. When I thought my son was in jeopardy, and they had to come back and retrieve me. They had to come back and retrieve me because I would be violating the order. And so then when I went to the family court process, and the DA shows up, which is a rare event, and they show up to block me from having two hours a day with my son, of any moment during this whole process, where the hammer felt so just fierce and so complete. When they came to try to block me from seeing my son for two hours a day, I knew that it was just designed. And even the family court judge said he's never seen a DA do this before, where they show up and they try to block, because it's not a family court matter, I mean, for the DA to show up. Then I knew just how, how incredibly determined they were and that my family became in the middle of this. I mean, we prevailed. I was able to start to see my son, and they figured it out, that the, the rash that he was going through, the allergy, was the separation from him with me, because it cleared right out after we got, we were reunited back together. I apologize, I didn't mean to, I apologize. You don't need to apologize. It's so it's hard to kind of be composed in telling this entire story without it's still touching you in a way that I just hope it doesn't ever touch any of you. Um, so that's part of uh, that whole process. And yes, I haven't, I'm not allowed to talk to my wife, and we did seek twice to get counseling together as we had hoped to do even before this at all uh, happened, and it, uh, it, they just won't allow it. They won't allow it. And that's another reason, I think, that I have, I really want her to be happy, safe, provided for. Her father has cancer, so she's home to be with her father. My son, who turns three on Saturday, and I can't be with him. Uh, you know, they have community down there, and she's loved and supported, and I want her to be in that place. Yeah.
the left ear is, and, the, and the moderates are full of assholes, and they're mean, more so than I've ever seen in the Midwest or other political environments. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to be, have, a, have that rough edge to survive and act. And I just think that it's time for us to start standing up and not be cowed. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Great. If there are no other questions, I want to thank Ross for coming yes, tonight, thank and you. then see if there's any final news. One more question. Uh, you okay. mentioned when you came here, and you know, you're going to talk to other organizations because I got to tell you, I I'm in a lot of other organizations. They need to hear this story too, Ron. I, you know, you're my I, baby steps. I, you're I, part I of my baby steps. I I I, you know, I, I, you know I, you're right. I mean, I am arrogant. And and I had always been tenacious, you know. But I mean, I but but that's what gave me that level of bravado and that level of tenacity to win sort of impossible campaigns sometimes, you know. And and that's part of who I am, and it makes me reflect on that. But they they hit me so hard that I'm just now sort of coming to a place where. I can't stand the fact that no, you don't know, that the people don't know what's been going on, and that's been killing me too. So yes, the answer is I will start doing that if people want to hear me. And perhaps I'll, be, I'll get better, more succinct in explaining the whole convoluted story and try to give you as much detail as you can possibly handle, because I'm happy to do that. You know, your inauguration speech kind of there probably scared a lot of the moderate forces. When you spoke about the African American community and that we have five percent population and sixty percent are incarcerated. Fifty eight. Fifty eight percent. The way that you spoke about it. And I also want to say this and hear me as a woman. <clears throat> I'm pissed off at some of these women groups, I'll be honest with you. I'm really pissed off at them. There they had a press conference, there were two women whose name I won't mention who supported his opponent in the election. You know, against that. I mean, I'm against domestic violence, but I think that the harm that's doing to you and your family is way beyond what happened. And um, I think we have to figure out. I'm going to contact Eileen Hampton with my buddy, and we have to see what we can do. Sheriff Mike I mean, Hennessy still supports me. I've talked to Mike. Uh, many in the community do so, but this has been such a paralyzing kind of issue that it sets people back. Because it's intimidating to people to want to, you know, and I get it. I honestly do get it. <clears throat> In my inaugural, I heard uh, how it seemed to rattle cages when I spoke about the disproportionate black population, and I referred to it as it's the Jim Crow system, even in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It's true. And the fact is that I made it very clear that as sheriff, um, it's time we start looking at how to deploy deputy sheriffs who get paid 23% less than SFPD, but they can also help augment some of the duties of SFPD. That did not go over well with many on that inaugural speech, and I got much feedback based on that. I wasn't looking you know, to start off from that way of antagonistic, but I was looking to set a vision forward of what it means to build on the Hennessy legacy, and I'm right. All I can say, uh, the question is about fears if I'm removed. All I can say is, we all fought. This club gave me that in your endorsement. Um, you know, I, I won by over six and a half percentage points. I was outspent by one of our chief rivals by more than two to one, especially for the Police Officers Union Association and others that assisted them. It was impressive fight, but it went unnoticed by the chronicle mostly, uh, but the bottom line concern is uh, that the independence of the Sheriff's Department be maintained and be maintained by civilian uh, who is not tethered to any one of the branch. And that's why Hennessy, Sheriff Mike Hennessy, I think was so effective and successful is that level of independence. Um, you don't want to invite something that I think would undermine or compromise that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, thank you.